Hello, I'm Brian Ades, and welcome back to Prime Time. This is a City Watch series about getting older. In each episode, we're going to introduce you to experts who deal with the issues that boomers and the generation before them face every day. I believe that to make good decisions, you need good information, and that's what this series will attempt to provide. In this segment, we have with us Warren Buck, a former high school teacher, a financial planner, an advocate for senior care, and an expert in reverse mortgages. Tell me, what is it that you do? In, in a nutshell, I'm trying to help seniors uh, use some of the available equity in their home to supplement the income that they've been losing or to cover any expenses. And also, I'm, in, I'm also connecting them with other services that may be a benefit to them, whether it's health care or medical needs. What would you say the determining factor is that a senior would need to make that decision that they don't, uh, that they need to tap into something like that? Well, what I'm seeing more and more, people are relying on credit cards or relying on their home equity or selling their investments currently. And when they're depreciating their assets right now to cover their expenses, that's the determining factor. So essentially what happens in a reverse mortgage is the bank is, uh, they're granting payments monthly for a 20 or 30 year period based on the equity in the home. Is there a limit to how much money can be given? Okay, well, let me be more clear about that. You've got the equity in your home mm -hmm. as a homeowner. You're pledging to the bank part of the equity of your home so that you can utilize that and you can utilize it how you see fit. That's right. it. So you can get it, you know, part of the money up front or in monthly payments. Now, when the loan is done, that's when you decide to pay back that portion of the loan. When the loan is done. When the loan is done. When you sell the property, when you change title, or when, when, you, pass. when you pass away. Yeah. Right. And is that is the funds received monthly taxable? If you receive it, it's tax free. Tax free. It's tax free. So rather that's than that's a great gain. That's yeah, a positive. That's a thing positive for gain. people. So rather than selling something that may have more growth to it. Mm -hmm. Or rather than selling something that's going to cause you a taxable event, you can withdraw some of these funds and it comes to you tax free. Now, if you invest that money and that makes you money, that money is taxable. It's taxable. Many people don't right. realize that. You were a teacher. I was a teacher, yes. And what, what were you teaching? What was your topics? I taught chemistry and physics to incoming ninth graders at the high school systems here in Los Angeles. And were you discouraged by the Los Angeles school systems that prompted you to get into another profession? Or? Well, I mean, I was having a difficult time making ends meet each year for my family. It pays well, but you're only working half the year and you don't have enough time to get another job. Mm -hmm. So uh, actually what led me into being a reverse mortgage specialist is I saw it happen to my parents. Back when I was teaching, I started to look at it. So you went from being a teacher into, into, into financial into, planning? Into financial planning, yes. Uh, my father had actually come down with Alzheimer's. He was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, and I needed to have a flexibility in my job so I can just leave anytime I want to. Mm -hmm. As a teacher, I couldn't do that. I had seen the reverse mortgage. I looked at it. I researched it, and I felt that would be something I can do very well. And are you the only? Are you a uh, only child? Did you have siblings involved? I have, I have a sibling, but she's not involved. Usually, in every family, you'll have multiple siblings, but only one is, you know, taking control of matters. The Got others it. kind of let things go. It seems like you would have done this early when reverse mortgages they haven't been around that long. They maybe have they been around? That yeah, that's long? that's a misconception. The reverse mortgages started in the 1960s. A PE coach saw that a grandmother in need, you mm. know, had to have money. They didn't have any family. He decided to give her a mortgage, take the money out of his name, mm -hmm. and he'd pay her income for that. That was the first reverse mortgage. Right. And wouldn't that be a cause for concern for a lot of people and a, a, an opportunity to take advantage of seniors? There was an opportunity and there was uh, scandals with insurance companies that used to write reverse mortgages before 1987. And uh, yes, they did take advantage. Like any loan, they'd get back the principal and interest, which mm -hmm. makes sense. But it was the only loan before 1987, which they would get some of the shared equity that grew in the property. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of absurd, don't you think? Right. Well, that's, I think that's everyone's concern that that's yeah. still going on, even mm -hmm. though it was regulated. Yeah, yeah. Well, in 1987, this, this, uh, this was viewed with HUD, Congress. It was an acts of Congress that were signed, right. acts of laws that were signed, endorsed by the president at the time. Mm -hmm. It's firmly regulated by the Housing and Urban Development, and it's insured by the Federal Housing Administration. 
That was Warren Buck. To get in touch with him, call 310-466-4418. Remember, the property you own or the property you would like to buy should be carefully considered as part of an overall plan for your future. I'm Brian Ades from Sotheby's International Real Estate, and I'm here to help.